on three, two, one. Yo, yo, yo to the yo, yo, yo. Phew, I made it. Hey, everybody, welcome to Bitcoin Moving. This is a beauty bubble. We're going to start a new little series, and we're going to take a cue from CNBC. You'll notice that this is called Tick by Tick. Now, I can't do tick by tick on my charts. We can only do it, uh, you'll get tick by tick on the, on the right axis. But of course, we can't show you the tick by tick on the candle. Uh, so we have to suspend imagination. Okay, as I was saying, um, just suspend imagination for just a little bit because I'm kind of playing around with how close I can get into the chart. Number one, whether that's useful um, and uh, going through maybe more of the pairs. So for example, we are showing the ETH USD on Coinbase pair right now um, with the beta chart that we've been coding now. Gosh, it'll it'll be four years in January, something like that. So uh, this isn't really for public consumption, the chart itself, but obviously we could strip away all of the um, parameters that are inside of the code and just be looking at the candles. So no problem there. And I may just build a chart that is for this series. So I have to work on a few things. Um, uh, we have to do a placard and just see if this works. Now what they're doing over at CNBC is that this is a visual only. There's no audio on their tick by tick. Um, I've seen this sort of thing before, but being that they're a news outlet, it's a little um, opportunistic. And, um, but, you know, I have to respect uh, their authority. And I thought, well, you know what? Um, we have every reason uh, to bring the trade uh, to my little uh, corner of the world. And uh, so that's what we'll be doing today for a little bit. So of course you can see that I'm on Ethereum and I will be moving over to the BTC right now. Oh, all right, there's the BTC. It's closed in the entire way and the trade's at 10,798. 99 up 8.54 percent on the day and basically what you're looking at here is that this is a Bollinger and you can look it up B-O-L-L-I-N-G-E-R so that's the Bollinger right there that this line that slices through Bollinger is the median and uh, so we can talk about um, more of this and uh, who knows um, with enough prodding we might be able to one day get John Bollinger to take a seat on our panel um, and uh, tell us more about what Bollinger is and, and does and what it means to uh, the trader to know how to read Bollinger and know how to trade Bollinger. Um, and I can tell you more about this chart going forward too if you guys prefer it over the Ruby. and. Uh, because Ruby on the tick by tick, because it's a fixed code, uh, it's more difficult to get in to actually see the one minute bar. We can see the one minute bar, but it doesn't display well because of the way that the fixed coding is. I can't really do these interior uh, shots like you're seeing here on uh, what we'll just call beta. And uh, beauty's beta, always in beta, never out of beta. All right, so that's that. That takes us here. Here's our hangout. So the only thing that we really need to do is sort out the chat, and I'll do that in just a moment. Let me get the window figured out here. And the one thing I didn't do was open up another Google Chrome. Let me see if I can open up another window. Okay, let's see what happens when I do that, if it changes for us. So tell me if that changes our 
put the hang out and do that. Is it? No. No, 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 no. We're good. Okay, so I opened up another window and we'll go over to YouTube. And we'll see that we're live. And we are. I always try and take a picture of this just to put it in my folder. And let's just to go here, turn that off there, and welcome to the chat. I'll be popping the chat out. Although it seems to be running pretty well, if I don't pop up in the chat, I'll pop out the chat. Let's see if we can keep things running without me popping out the chat. All right, let's make sure that the mic bot is working. I'll start off with forward slash signals. So let me just kind of run through this, guys, okay? And forward slash Fibonacci. And the way that I've got the night bot, most of these are for the ruby. So I could do the same thing for, for this chart, too. I just have to go back in there and change the uh, Twitter. Um... And then we have signals, um, oh, rules, right? There we go. I just want to make sure that the mic bot's working. And it looks like it is. So we're good to go there. All right, so we're just waiting for the timed posts. I'll keep an eye on that. We do have time post, time posts on the night bot. And the cool thing about the night bot is that it reminds you guys that if you wanted to become part of the panel, uh, that just reach out to my Twitter if you want to be. And I have a little thing that's, that says that if you want to, um, Everton, you did. Okay. Well, you happy? There are lots of channels out there uh, to watch, but thank you for, for finding mine. Appreciate it. Well, good, good. Okay, so what's happening here is that we are below, of course, this is just the one minute bar. So don't, um, you know, we're not going to, I'm not going to do like a full spectrum, full what I call the condors pass on where price is. If you've got a good chart, make sure that you go to your highest uh, time frame and then you get in tighter and tighter. And then usually for conversational sake, as far as to keep conversation going, um, a lot of traders will stay in the 15, the 5, and even even the 1 minute. And then the bigger conversations, of course, you can go into the larger time frames. Um, but because of the volatility, what will happen, and one reason why CNBC is doing the tick by tick, which um, I find fascinating uh, because the, um, the minute chart, uh, as I have this kind of funny thing to say about the minute chart, the minute chart is a very kind of dangerous place uh, to spend your trading uh, day in when you are new or you're just kind of coming into even your trading day. You know, you still have to start off with the bigger chart so that you have a concept of where things in where things are at. And then of course, all of us trade inside of the micro uh, minute. Uh, none of us can ever avoid that. Uh, so I think that we'll do, we'll do well by the tick by tick. Uh, this is how I used to um, do the um, Bitcoin when we were trading Mt. Gox. And I would used to, used to be laughed at, you know, um, why would anyone want to watch the one minute chart? Well, and then here we are. 
I watch the one minute because the bigger markets, of course, spend a great deal of time um, in the one minute. We all still have our levels on the bigger time frames. We all have our targets on the bigger time frames or higher horizons. Uh, but um, I think it's very useful uh, for all of us um, to see uh, the tick data or the one minute chart in action with commentary. So I think it's really good. And um, we have Everton saying, I do not speak English well to communicate. I'm using Google Translator. Do you think now that you've reached the 11,000 mark, um, if, if it's going to lose its strength? So um, at any of these markers, uh, there's a lot of things that are going on, a lot of kind of perfect storm situations, right? You have, there is uh, news, right? There's social impact. Uh, there are investors um, that get together and make these, you know, fairly large commitments uh, to what their what their attitude is going to be towards the trade. So, of course, today we had a lot of, you know, and if you had been watching the Consensus Invest 2017 and seen some of the names that were in New York talking about Bitcoin, you would understand that. You know, we're talking about major um, uh, hedge funds that are eyeing and have been eyeing. They've been testing out the waters now for a while, but now they're actually coming and being face forward so that they can represent, you know, their investors' interests. So we're seeing just a collision of um, something, you know, a market that has been not I can't say underground, but unnoticed. And so, you know, over the last really like eight months, even, even with the hacks, you know, you get noticed for maybe you know, a week and then the news falls off. But really in the last six, seven months, we cannot, we cannot open any financial website. We can't open up up a financial newspaper or any kind of journal or newsletter in which Bitcoin is not mentioned. So this is just a culmination. This is very traditional um, at the in the November uh, prior to December 11th, which is when the market starts to kind of you know they close things down. In the old days, they used to just you know close start to kind of wane their position so that they can go through the holidays and. And then, of course, things start to, to ramp back up again, uh, really not until February. So this is going to be interesting in that they're trying to make all these decisions in a month of rest and retiring. And so that's where we have to be cautious that we don't think that it's going to lose strength and collapse. It's just retiring. So they're getting involved. And these bigger hands are able to take a $2,500, $3,000 swing. So they know their risk model. And so even if we were to pull off, um, and many people in Bitcoin talk about the 30%, you know, um, they're very scared of the parabolic moves. They're wonderful to to go through, but um, all of us look at, you know, I have some sort of a spectrum on our chart about the 30% drawdown. So, you know, you just have to um, know that you are, you've come in at a very uh, volatile, emotional, symbolic moment and, uh, and follow, I wish that my, my night bot was releasing. I have all these rules about some of the things that you can look at. And um, so it's, you know, you just come in at a very interesting time and, you know, caution uh, really for anybody that's, that's in the trade, whether that, uh, you know, you've been in it for a very long time or you're telling people about getting involved or that you just stumble into it and decide to jump in you know just it, it, it's a very cautionary tale and um but of course i wish you all the best of luck uh voce falambus 
bastante rápido y no ha consigno entender derretido todo que dice tem al blog what's up ok o algo que possamos discutir de forma escrita sobre los BTC um, so no me gusto whatsapp um, Experience uh, con YouTube only. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. Um, well, that's odd because uh, I don't I don't really speak that fast, but I can understand that you're probably thinking I'm saying things that um, are kind of new. But so, uh, yes, I can. Actually, in the upper right hand banner, you'll notice that there are there's a couple of places where you can read my writings, and then of course, you can follow my Twitter. And uh, but in the upper right hand banner, you'll notice that I go to Medium and do some sandbox work there, and then I have a um, I always forget which one it is, I have a blogger. And every once in a while, I'll do some, you know, power writings over there. Um, and then the, um, with If This, Then, and That, I put all of the YouTube over at um, WordPress. So, but yes, I'm out there. And then, of course, I have a very, a lot of videos. And uh, there are a few um, Spanish-speaking uh, traders that are on YouTube. I don't know if you've kind of gone around to see to see them, but there are a few. I, I've never I've never stepped in to see the quality of of their work, but there are a few. But um, I apologize for, I really shouldn't, you know, of course, all of us should know how to speak Spanish. Um, but I can tell you that I've had thousands of traders um, in my forums, and a lot of them have uh, improved their English over time. So by listening to the English speaker, talk about something that they're interested in, you know, without trying to teach you English. So, but even uh, my, um, my Ruby, uh, I have a um, Spanish speak speaking YouTube that's been put out about my Ruby, which is really very fun to listen to in Spanish. Okay, so this is what's happening here. If any of you understand about Bollinger, the trade as it came down and followed the Bollinger bands doesn't like to spend too much time outside of the bands. So as it's coming down, it seeks to go inside the bands. And then, of course, the real revelation will always be at the median. And then we'll see some sort of a like a kickback at the median. But if the trade is supposed to continue to the upside, then of course it'll break through the median. It'll come back up to the upper Bollinger Band. And all those markings are there. All those levels are there. Obviously the threat on the chart here is the lower Bollinger Band. It's in the green there. And the expectation is that the trade will roll over and come back down to test the median. We have some other markings on this chart. I won't go into all of them because as I said, the there it's all in beta uh, so it wouldn't help anybody uh, but you can at least see the Bollinger Band the lower Bollinger Band the upper Bollinger Band and the median marked on the right axis and these are traditional settings for Bollinger I did not do anything uh, fancy with that it's just to follow the other markings so here we have a rejection of the median However, the other markings are giving us a twist or a turn of the EMAs. And uh, if they twist or turn to the upside, then we can break through the median. If they twist and turn and push 
uh, it does kind of like a little bit of a flickering and then price will come back down to the, the lower drawing of the Bollinger. All right, so um, let me see here. Let me grab, make sure that we have, I know the green heart will let us read, but I can't grab that yet. Let's see here. Okay, so we have Everton. And the chat seems to be working pretty well. And you can put forward slash. It's all right. What's crazy is that I can't grab. If I take the chat out, I can grab. Maybe I can do it from here. Hold on just a moment. Let me see. I can. Forward slash green heart. And that will give you another command. Let's see what that one is. Yes, there you go. So we have green heart, blue, green heart, blue heart, and red dot. So you can see the EMA twist came in. See if you'll see that right there. We get the rest, and then now we're getting another retest of Bollinger. This is a pretty good um, cross. So there we go. If we can keep price above the median, uh, then as I said, price will uh, go further to the upside to this marker here. So we hit the 20 base, I believe. Yes. So we need to get above the 40 base. And then now we have Bollinger up at the top here. So we're, and we're doing good. All right. That is that. Here we go. Breaking the median now. And that cross should give us enough energy to push to the upper Bollinger Band. And then we'll see where price is. We are under the 243 AMA for the uh, one minute. So there is some bearish pressure up here. But it's all situated and poised that that cross now, the cross having happened underneath the median, doesn't help us too much, but you know it's possible. Now we're on our third bar bull. And I think we'll do okay. Third bar bull. Okay. So what I want to do now is go ahead and share up to my Twitter. Let's go back to my tool and see how that looks. Hmm, I don't want to compete with anyone else that's on. Oh, that looks good. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, I'm pretty happy with that.
And let's make sure that the presenting to everyone and the mic is on mute, not yet. All right, so we're doing well. So we're not seeing any flaring of the bands yet. So we get the rejection and we get a little bit of a Elliot, a three got printed there. So the pushback could be to the median, we get a four print. And if that's the flag, get another power charge up, but the bands uh, the lower band, it looks pretty supportive, but the upper band, and as I said, the 243 is really supplying some downward pressure regardless. So this is Scalper's Dream, just so that you know. And I think probably that this is where a lot of uh, uh, traders will find themselves uh, privately, of course, especially once we go live. There's a little bit of flaring that you just saw. So we have some heat seeking wicks that are pushing the bands and making the bands flare out. But we will see a lot more scalpers come in and they'll provide their own special, I know, I know. It's fantastic, right? Did you see my 11, my 11,000 one though? I put a tweet out with the <laughs> with the eleven thousand anime. I wish I knew who she was, really, but um, we did reach eleven thousand. So I'm doing the tick by tick, um, inspired by CNBC. All right, so that doji that we're seeing right there, that's not uh, good for the uh, bulls for now. So we want to keep an eye on that. That is a doji inside of Bollinger above the median after a twist. So it can be the end of the run uh, in many different ways, meaning the end of the run for any chance for the bears to, um, I should say it this way, it's the end of the move to the upside. It speaks to the end of the move to the upside. So we had said that, you know, the 243 is really giving us a lot of pressure. Now there's a flattening of the Bollinger. You'll notice that now the Bollinger, the end of the Bollinger is looking more horizontal than it is directional. So uh, it's still a great scalper's dream. You go from the lower Bollinger to the upper Bollinger, from the upper Bollinger to the lower Bollinger. And we know that we're looking for a four print for the Elliott. And uh, I wish I could tell you just off the cuff if that's a minuet or a, um, I think it's a minuet. So these are just small fractal movements. And the chart that you're looking at is actually uh, an almost very scientific way of looking at fractals uh, in accordance with um, one of um, the great men of uh, the world of, of charts. Um, would be Mr. Andrew Cardwell. And of course, you know, today I'm focusing just on the Bollinger because that is um, something that most people are familiar with. If you're interested in Andrew Cardwell's work, uh, just take a look at Andrew Cardwell online or follow his Twitter, similar to John Bollinger. Follow these, these are great men. They're still living, they're still very active, although behind uh, paywall, you know, products as professional men, um, but uh, they're fantastic and uh, they're geniuses. So I would love to one day get this chart just so robust and representative of these two great men. Uh, but you know, I've just been taking all of it very slow and watching and observing. I usually do not publicly showcase the one minute chart, but because we're doing this tick by tick, and I can clean away all of the code and everything so that you're just looking at 
at the candles, but this gives us a chance to uh, talk about indicators and momentum. Uh, how, how do you follow the trade? How do you have any clue whatsoever as to where price is uh, and how price might be reacting off of other timed indicators, momentum, uh, etc. You know, there's probably as far as like well-known indicators that are known by by traders it probably is over 5,000 uh, different ways of looking at a uh, price plotted price plotted yes so um, the night bot uh, my timed delivery which has all of our trader rules is not working for me today it was it stopped working yesterday so pardon for that but I do have kind of a nice little package of rules uh, kind of to think about and live by so I need to sort that out so that this can be more informative but thank you very much for stopping by this is beauty bubble of course for Bitcoin moving tick by tick we started 31 minutes ago inspired by CNBC over at Facebook if you can believe it is doing a video only version of Bitcoin moving they don't even tell you what Bitcoin it is so it's got to be an index of some sort uh, for me I'm always showcasing the BTC USD coinbase pair that is until further notice and uh, they're doing a tick by tick and of course they have these beautiful graphics and it's all very fun and interesting but just video at least when I ran over there, it was just video. So I was like, wait a minute here. I can I can uh, do that too. And uh, so that's why we're powering up right now. Not only that, but of course we have these wonderful price, wonderful price action activity. The trade's at $10,749.99. Let me please remind everyone, that is 10749 now 10700 and fifty dollars a coin. I want you to just wrap your brain around that. Had you? There's a lot of had you uh, information out there, which is just uh, it's getting almost kind of socially very silly. Um, we have lots of lots of had you's uh, coming from all corners um, of, of the pundit from the pundits, you know. And uh, one such pundit yesterday said, had you last year, had you last year uh, put $50,000 towards Bitcoin, uh, today you'd be, and he said the word prick, today you'd be a prick. <laughs> and he would do the math. <laughs> so I was like, oh my gosh, this is a legacy trader. It's like, oh wow, right? And, uh, you know, he, in lots of ways, I can tell you from my experience, you know, that, that attitude, you know, there's a lot of attitude. And um, attitude when, you know, it's just an attitude is one thing. But I will tell you that with Wall Street, and I know that's like, oh, Wall Street, well, whatever. Wall Street equals money a lot of money and learned money people that know money they know how it works they know how to make more they know their risk models their this is they live and breathe this they live and breathe money and um i think we really need to go back right uh, to the white paper to understand that the essence of bitcoin is money so it's just fascinating that we would go through this all this like oh no it's the social impact no no it's for the world of good and well yes it's all of those things but right now the reason that people are looking is that it is an asset class an asset class it's not a hobby it's not um something that you do so that you can sound cool with your friends where it's some kind of you know anarchist uh, you know 
It's some sort of revolution. It's an evolution of money. It's an evolution of an asset class. <clears throat> and now that we have Wall Street looking and peering in, really what we should be doing, as far as I'm concerned, is become more observant, more quieted, more interested, more informed, you know? And, uh, and let's just watch what they do, because I think it's going to be remarkable. And there's certainly a lot that you can learn. And thanks for really, really reminding me of what the white paper is. It is a peer, meaning what, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And some of us could have problems with the fact that it would come to the exchanges. I know I've had a problem with it. I think that it should remain peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. I think that that would be fine enough to do it that way. Uh, but exchanges saw that there was what? There was money to be made. Okay. We're able to even see it plotted on uh, on the charts. And, and now the value is being set by uh, the traders. And Wall Street is going to set the price. I think that in some ways that is sort of against the essence of this. But it's what's needed. Uh, in order to find uh, what I call free market equilibrium. But what is that number? And um, so, <clears throat> but thank you, really, he's my guy. He's my bae. He's my YouTube bae. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab a little bit of water. You can hear my voice going right now. I'll be right back. I'll be on mute.
Okay, so it will be like that probably for most of the day is me coming off and on. And thank you for the upvote. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. All right, so let's go over to Twitter for just a moment. And I'm going to see about, very interested in these analytics that we're getting over at Twitter, especially for that basket of um, hashtags. And let me see. Trades at 10,700 even. And Bollinger is squeezing in a little bit. This is what's called a squeeze. It's not, it's not like super uh, crazy, actually. It's still very interesting in that we hit, price hits lower Bollinger, comes back to the median, takes another test at op uh, upper Bollinger. And we did actually get the, our fourth marking. We'll see that right there. Our fifth marking, this is the sign that actually the Elliott has exhausted itself and then price will begin to take its fall. We got some pretty interesting candle um, here with the heat seeking wick uh, to see maybe where the stops were. And hold on just a moment, be right back. Really, really, if you're still around, I'm having some difficulty with my night bot. Do you have any um, ideas as to what the problem might be with that, if you're still around? Uh, the night bot, I'll go ahead and put it in here. The night bot on the command side it is sort of working. But the night bot on the timed posts, that stopped working yesterday. So I, we also noticed that the night bot was, it was allowing the forward slash commands for about three days. And then it decided that it, it didn't like that. So I had to convert some of the commands to the exclamation point. And then the timed, the timed posts were doing really well. And then yesterday I was on and Alfredo had said to me, it's because we don't have enough activity in chat. And I was kind of like, mm, I don't know about that because um, I've been alone in the chat when I was doing, when I was first building the Nightbot commands out and, and uh, all by myself, you know, and then, and the, and the timed posts were, were delivering just fine. I thought maybe in your experience you had seen a way to reload or like disable, enable, something like that. Because they're really good ones, really. Like, because I watched your Nightbot do what you had it do, I really kind of re engineered how, how clever it is to have those auto delivery, you know, to make them more helpful, more interesting more informative so that's what i want to do so I, I really enjoy it i just got i don't know you know you get you get like there's so many things on your whiteboard of things to do and fix and work and you know and you never know if it's really what 
the viewer wants, but it's maybe something that you know you wanted to explore. Oh, do you think maybe I should go to the fuss spot? Oh, but that's local on your server, though. Huh? Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I there's a fellow over at Facebook called Zupcoin. He's working on a Facebook Messenger, and it is really, really cool. And I'm just I'm really interested in knowing more about running the relays and um, and having a different kind of an attitude towards these relays because uh, he's running Zupcoin, which allows for you to um, put in a concatenated uh, list. And um, But what you can't do over at the Messenger is you can't take the Facebook Messenger and relay what the user has put in like you can't even cut and, you can't even cut and paste you can't copy to put somewhere else you can't send it somewhere else so i've got all these wacky ideas and what's nuts is that i come up with the wacky ideas nobody's interested and then three years later i find out that somebody's actually built a business around it. So I know that there's people, a lot more people, that want to see some of these more clever, clever ways. But I should probably be asking how things are and if you're good with the family and everything. I've seen you, my notifier has has uh, let me know that that you're still doing your gaming, which is oh so fun. And you want it, You might want to take a look at Bebo's new um, OBS alternative for Twitch. I needed to let you know about that. It looks like they have released it in maybe version two out of beta. I need to connect you up with that. But it's there's a lot of people are giving it some very high um, to call high re high reviews or. Yes, we still have a coughing house. Okay, let's get back to the chart that you're looking at. That's the BTC USD Coinbase chart. It's a tick by tick. You're looking at a one minute bar. And really, if you're kind of new to uh, my charts, you really just have to understand that this area of teal or aqua or green, however it's coming across on your monitor, is a Bollinger Band. That's all it is. You can create one yourself. And um, we can talk more about, about the Bollinger Band. I'd much rather do it with John Bollinger, who is the creator of the Bollinger Band, but it's very common to see Bollinger Bands on charts all around the world. And um, so what's happening here is that in the classic sense, Bollinger gives you an idea of when price is depressed underneath the median line. And uh, also that uh, price does not like to stay outside of the bands that often. So you'll notice many times that buyers will come in uh, when price goes below the bands because they're trying to collect some lower prints and uh, then they'll take the trade up to the median. This is, that's a very typical kind of a scalp. Uh, the other kind of scalp is that you'll take the trade from the lower Bollinger Band and you'll go ahead and you'll live through it coming through the bands to the upper band. And you'll notice on the right axis that I have the lower band, the BB lower, that's the lower price. Then you have your median price and you have your upper price so that you're able to follow your trade. You always, of course, go to the time of day. I'll be back.
I've been in a coughing house for almost a month. And, um, oh man. Um, okay, so So what you're seeing now is that the Bollinger Bands are flaring and uh, basically the shorts are coming in to seek whether or not people have stops down here underneath Bollinger. We do have an upper Bollinger Band uh, flare and this can mean that the Bollinger is allowing for price actually to digest itself lower and lower and lower. So we need to keep an eye on this obviously. And uh, let's take a look at you see here where I should go that's the hangout link to get myself situated here so for the last little bit actually for one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve for the last 13 minutes uh, we have been registering lower prints and not always, right? We certainly, when you look at this, you're not always getting lower lows for each bar. We did in here. So we got lower lows. We got some equilibrium. Some buyers came in. The sellers, of course, won the won that little bit of the uh, rally. So the buyers lost out on that. Buyers came back in, but uh, just with a little toe in. Buyers came back in here, thinking that maybe we can get uh, a little bit more rise. Now the sellers owned it, here the buyers are buying down here at the lower Bollinger. They like those lower prints right there. This is very classic, people seeking where those lower prints are. And then the secondary buyers, the second level buyers come in. And those second level buyers can push the third level to get in. And those buyers will own it for sure to the median. So it's potentially where the buyers can push it push it actually to the median. Depends on who's really in charge and uh, where the liquidations are and where the hands are that want to that want to be in. Remember it is 1.30 New York time and uh, so it is sort of kind of and you'll get to know the lunch what's called the lunch trade in the legacy markets but uh, all the traders should be back on their seats now and uh, seeing where they want to take the prints Still reminding you that the 243 is well above here. That means that there is still a lot of bearish momentum. You'll also notice too that the median is pointed more downwards. And I can show you a little trick on what you can do with the median. All right. Okay, so is everybody happy with that then? We'll go back through the rules of Ruby. And I'll be doing this for uh, this chart as well. And we have signals. So see all that's coming out really. Do you see that? And we have the Fibonacci. So the night bot, you know, the night bot can hear me. <laughs> can you hear me, night bot? <laughs> Come in, night bot. All right, so let me take a little bit of a break. You guys hang out.
Okay, so you guys can see that we have yet another cross, another cross of these important EMAs to the chart. And yet the cross was met with the median, so we get some resistance at the median. The bands are all below the 55 base, which is also an important line. And yet the 243 is well above. That would be the stretch goal, actually, is to find our way kind of sort of getting closer as the EMA has continued to uh, break down even. But just so that you can see exactly how the Bollinger kind of ebbs and flows, price comes out of Bollinger. It really doesn't like to do that. We don't know exactly when it's going to come back in Bollinger. But just so that you know, price feels very uncomfortable outside of Bollinger and seeks to come inside of Bollinger to kind of self-heal. But in this particular case, we found ourselves at a Bollinger. We had a self-heal. I'll just call it a self-heal event. Coming back into Bollinger with a cross. And yet we know that the, the bears are, have really been in charge here. You'll notice that all of price, outside of a few wicks looking for stop hunts, have been uh, in favor of the bear. So what we're looking for, of course, if you're a bear, congratulations. You understand the move of, of the fractals and you don't get freaked out. And you've got your kind of lines in the sand of how long you want to stay bear. It is two o'clock on the East Coast, so we know that all traders are back from their lunch hours and their maybe celebratory moments, um, certainly back at their desk by now, and taking a look to see you know, who's running the show. You'll notice that the Bollinger, the upper Bollinger band has been in a downward trajectory. The median has been in a downward trajectory, yet there's a, a shallowness. I hope you can see that. There's sort of a shallowness for that lower print so price um you know probably would like to um at least fill in the upper uh bollinger so let's see what happens we did get a doji and of course it's a one minute doji after the cross and that is a sign that that particular move is over it's exhausted there are no takers uh, there's no risk taking, uh, and so they take it off the table, and that's why we get these these dojis that come in that look like that. It was a seller's doji, however, and uh, so you could look at it this way: that the sellers are exhausted, and then that, that's a signal for the buyers uh, to come in and take on a little bit of risk, which is what they're doing. Very, very little amounts of risk as price nudges itself up against the median. So let's see what happens and who's really going to run it. You can see it live here, right, tick by tick. Thank you very much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Um, and I have the chat open too. What you have to do is um, we're doing more kind of night bot sort of stuff in the chat. Um, yes, Alfredo, you can hear me now, right? Hope so, yeah. I've been going on and off mic, so. I have heard that, Alfredo. I'm sure you know that, right? Yes, it is. And I enjoy it too. It's always a good idea to talk yourself through um, a trade, so I find it uh, very, you know important so it's not just my work but I do I think it's really um, a good thing to talk through price that's why it's called bringing voice to the charts that's what I've been talking about all these years bringing voice to the charts All right, so the median band, um, the median, pardon me, we're just getting a rejection of any highs. And it's really a shame because the, uh, the buyers are willing to take the risk on. And they're just getting their heads lopped off little by little. It's being called chopped up. The trade at 10,033, still up 3.9% uh, on the session. And um, 
So it's still a good day. I think the numbers are probably um, skewing, kind of, um, you know, like we're up 3.78 or $376 per coin. So um, we were, uh, what was the high? 11, 11,485. So, you know, whether you could say, no, this is just people are jockeying for position, but clearly the sellers have been, uh, since we've been doing the tick by tick, the sellers have been owning this move. And we are going to stay on the one minute here, by the way. I'm not going to be moving around my window. We just want to see how that feels to everybody, if they like this sort of thing. Well, what's crazy about Chart Chat Connect is that Quiet actually told me that uh, GoDaddy just renewed us. So it's just a matter of where I'm going to uh, get it hosted. But so we still, I think we have it on the on the diary or the schedule um, to get together and talk about what it is that we want to do. But um, the first time that I said bringing voice to the charts um, was in front of IDEO. That was the first time that I publicly shared it. And, um, and then that October, so that was in June of 2013, that October um, we bought the domain. Chart Chat Connect. We bought two domains, Chart Chat Connect and Coin Chat Connect. And I let Coin Chat Connect go. And um, and then we were supposed to just kind of let Chart Chat Connect kind of run its course. And uh, so uh, you want me to check my messenger, huh? Let me see, can I do that? Um, okay, I'll check that later then. Yeah. Let's see what it says. I know that Adam was able to do, you know, a number on it or whoever's after my property. Um, but They were able to, let me see what we've got. See, it doesn't load. So I don't know what you're getting exactly. But you know, we have a Slack and, um, you know, I've been able to maintain the, You know the the name it just becomes too. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna talk about it and see what it is that we should do with it. But yeah, it still comes out for Traders Plus, so that goes back you know for a hundred years over on. Um, well, I built it up on WordPress, on Google+. Um, the first time that Chart Chat Connect got spoken about over at Bitcoin Org, Bitcoin Talk Org, was, I wish there was a date on this. Um, but, be fun if there was a date on this. But anyway, this is a fellow that was over at Bitcoin talk it's pretty popular and I uh, just wish that there was a date that would help me out quite a bit and um, but anyway that's one of the first public mentions okay I'll check on all of those later Alfredo I don't know What's going on? I know that I gave up Coin Chat Connect, <clears throat> and who, if anybody has it, I hope they're having a good time. Let's see 
see here. Then, um, of course, there's a lot of trading view stuff, and uh, of course, Twitter. Um, and then, of course, it gets into the um, the advisory stuff and how, you know, I could look up a hundred websites of people that are on the cusp and uh, clearly mine was never on the cusp, but Adam was just, I mean, it got spammed so horribly and then, you know, you get put into a certain trustworthiness situation. Yeah, so invalid domain name is what I have. A lot of what to avoid. And, um, so I don't know. We'll have to figure out what we want to do with it. Domains are so hard, and there's to so many other places that you can take your, you know, your interests and your content and, and let them deal with, you know, the scam artists and, and people that want to come in and, you know, because you, you, you pay for the domain, right? And you pay for it and you think that you're okay. And, and uh, just with a couple of hits of a button, um, you know, you, you find your domain completely unusable or you're closed out.
Okay, guys, so let me tell you what's happened, as I said, right? The bears are running the show. The bears are running the show. They have not run out of steam. They have continued to push price down below the median. We have, we have not standed a chance. We have had these EMAs that have crossed over and provided a signal of divergence. They go up, price goes down. And uh, so here we are. Um, I feel like maybe I should move and do a Ruby chart, but I think maybe we'll just, I said that we were going to stay live until about three. And then maybe what we'll do is that we can power up um, maybe, what can I say here? What do I want to tell you guys? Um, I mean, now I'm going to stay true to the reason that we, we came on to watch the one minute chart. We came on to watch price move in this minute micro version of itself, right? I'm not going to show you the weekly chart and talk about the weekly chart and yet, of course, be shouting uh, of what's going on with the minute. All of us execute in the microsecond. Just check your... PNL, all of us do. So you can't be afraid of looking at the one minute to see how price is undulating, where's the momentum, who's in charge. All of these things happen in the micro moment. So the closest, of course, that I can bring you is the one minute bar, but the right axis, being that it's a timed axis, gives you um, you know, gives you price unless uh unless the chart starts to clunk up or whatever, we're able Yes, Alfredo. There are bulls and there are bears. That is what the market is made up of, okay? Price is controlled by either one of these types of traders, trades, volatility, news, earnings, like reports, uh, catastrophic, could be weather, and such. Okay. If we were to go back to my baby pips, you know, that I've got a whole series. I stopped at Fibonacci, actually, but you need to go through the babypips.com, and you can do the baby pips and follow along my baby pips that I have on on YouTube, where I actually, I just read the, the baby pips. I do not really give my personal um, approach, but I just make sure that you go through the baby pips by following along with you so you definitely probably should start there a lot of traders start there it's and then you just build up your repertoire of, of learning from just a very simple place um and then of course there's the khan academy on youtube you should probably build a playlist of traders kind of specific Khan Academy. That might be a good thing to do for everybody. But I don't know if you knew this or not, but I'm sort of kind of busy. Um, let's see here. All right. You can also look up Investopedia, investopedia.com, and put anything in their search bar. It's kind of like Wikipedia, but for investors, you can go to Investopedia. For signals and chart patterns and so forth like that, you can go to what's called um, the pattern site and this is Thomas Bulkowski's site 
and he doesn't care whether or not a site looks like it came out of the out of the 70s because it's powerful and it works and it gets visited by a lot of people and so he talks about the patterns all the patterns are there Elliott Wave fundamental psychology he gives you quizzes there's research event patterns tutorials setups etc it's unbelievable and of course he has a book so that's Bukowski um, then Okay, so Investopedia gets you kind of started with the syntax. Khan Academy has a lot of things that are really fantastic. And then, of course, if you want to, you can go over to FinBiz. And the reason that you would go to FinBiz is because it does discuss, well, first of all, it puts a lot of news in one place. So you go over to finviz.com. So those are the three sites today that I would recommend that at least you have some understanding of. Um, of course, TradingView, but you're going to get a lot of opinion over there, but TradingView. And the free version gives you a chart that you can build of your own. And they just had their Black Friday. I don't know if their Black Friday special is still going on, but a lot of pe people just have, you know, they just go up there to visit, build one chart. They're not interested in publishing any charts to the public. Um, I'm sure you probably know my story of being over Trading View, but. It's, we have been so close up for such a long time. Let's see what's going on. Trading view just reloaded. 99.65. Let me go ahead and zip in here and see if I can get us any closer. Let's see, that's as close as I can get. Go. Let's keep that on there. Let's see if that'll stay with us. Okay. Sorry about that. All right, so does everyone know what's going on? All right, price is coming back into Bollinger. It's tagging the median. We know who's in charge.
see, it seems as though maybe, I don't know. It seems as though um, trading view. We have any problems or what? Oh. Let's see, where's my countdown timer? It's hidden somewhere here. Okay, you guys are going to see me move my chart around just a little bit. I think the chart's having problems loading. See that loader? Hmm. Let's go back to the one minute. All right, so I might have to take us off of screen share for just a little bit and reload another chart. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay. So we can resolve this. It's not good. Don't be scared. I'll be right back, okay? I'll, I'll even keep you guys on now. Keep you guys on audio. Yeah. See what I can do. There we go. Just give me a moment. I'm pretty sure that everyone is very taxed. And um, just make sure that our charts are all working. Go ahead and get our Ruby up. All right, that's why. Here we are having, I'll go ahead and get this up and going for you guys so you guys can see. Right. This is why I have a good chart up. I, that the servers are being taxed. Like that. Okay, so, you know, you could tell that it wasn't quite understanding because my other windows were not showing the same thing as a darn trading view okay so here we go this is the ruby 15 minute i know it's not tick by tick I'm showing you the one minute doesn't help on, on ruby whatsoever because of the way that she's built but clearly we got a catch of the 243 that is the ruby 243 you've heard me talk about the 243 over at the tick chart this is the 243 on the 60 minute that you were concerned that it would be a 243 on the 15 minute is not. It's a fixed, and the way that Ruby is coded is that these are all fixed EMAs. And uh, so we got caught by the 243, which is fantastic. And um, Let's see, what do I want to write? Mm, we were caught. Oh. All right, so, and it brought us down to 9,000. So if you can imagine, the 243 is always a threat to the longs. When the trade is long, and of course, uh, Ruby has been long on the trade since way back when, I can tell you exactly when. And you'll notice that there's a difference, right, between 
trading on Ruby and trading on a beta chart, right? And especially on the one minute, you can find yourself so locked in, so tight in. We knew that the we knew that the bears were in control, and so if you were bear on the trade, you were doing okay. It's a matter of whether or not you wanted to carry the trade to the 243, which you could have done, and obviously people look to seek out and it looks to me as that they bought the 243 if they could get it down there it got pushed down there and remember i don't make the prices but it's just uh you know the brilliance of having a great chart in front of you and knowing that these are possibilities so the trade right now is running underneath the 96 and between the 96 and the 243 and there's some clever things that you can do to manage uh how this uh, trade is where the bears um have have just decided to take over a lot of liquidations um, probably coming in if we were to go over to the tweet deck and uh, so it gets uh, very dicey and this is why if you're brand new to this trade it's going to you know it's going to rock your soul and um, you have to be okay with that this is a long game and uh, there's a lot of different sorts of people that are involved in it now so i'd said earlier it's sort of kind of like a perfect storm it's where the alchemists the anarchists literally meet up with wall street it's like it's it's like the the, uh, the gangsters of new york whatever the name of that movie is the gangs of new york i think so it's sort of like that you know it's it's a clash of two cultures a clash of two ideals, experience, um, bravado, and uh, so it's going to feel different. It, there's going to be a lot of volatility. If you follow my Twitter, there's been a lot of warnings about about this, and um, you get you know too greedy. Eleven thousand was a great print, um, and uh, if you had read my Twitter, it did look as though we would probably travel that direction and you know if you wanted to still stay in there the head lopping that you'll get the reality check that you'll get if you see it is that right now your trade high is off two thousand points or two thousand dollars two thousand ticks trade is off two thousand points and that is the reality check and that is wall street that's what they can do that's what they do every day that's what they do in nine seconds that's the, what they do for their whole life so if you're unaccustomed to volatility uh coming into your position and uh, slaughtering your p l uh then you know just read more uh, learn more uh, be more cautious have definitely more ideas on risk management and reasoning um, an unreasonable trader will um, find themselves on, on the wrong side of this so you do have to have a lot of you know um, well I, I put my rules out there just follow some basic rules learn some basic things know that anything can happen no one knows what will happen no one and um, understand that in some part too, it, it, it's a game, meaning that it's called a game, like the game, uh, but it is the hardest game of your life. And it may feel like a poker game or a video game or something like that, but it truly isn't. This is money, people's lives, people's futures, and um, and this is how it runs its course and this is what being a trader means is that you are trading your time and equity uh, at risk at great risk for building up your equity so be careful i know that you're probably being yelled out somewhere and you know profanity and exuberance and Yes, I and I get I get all of that, but when it comes down to this, and especially in the first quarter of next year, if you don't get this, and if you think that you can do this trade stoned, inebriated, hungover, uh, have 
animals and critters around you and be confused. You will not be able to handle it. And you will think that you will be able to, but, but uh, eventually the trade will show you who you are. And maybe this is sort of kind of where my um, very distinct uh, motherly, over, you know, a bitchy kind of way about me comes from is that you have to give up a lot. And uh, we are not selling dresses. We don't work at the, you know, at the flower shop. Um, a lot of this is not fun at all. It's difficult work. And um, yes, I'll say that you, I guess you've never heard me. <laughs> you've never heard me at work. All right, so let's run over to Tweet Deck and see what they've got going on. I think maybe it might be time to do that. And I can do that on the big on the window. So why don't I go ahead and run over there, go over to Tweet Deck. And remind you guys about Tweet Deck. And you can see that these that the cells liquidated longs four million four hundred and four thousand. Now they got in high. Look at that. Eighty nine ninety five was when their position and they got liquidated at just under nine thousand. That is a lot of positions, a lot of contracts. They're out. Four thousand four million four hundred and four thousand nine sixty five. Here's another liquidation of a long. On the XBTZ17 on the futures contract, 668,942 contracts liquidated at 9147. The whale walks into a bar, there's no counter. Liquidated long, 838,000 contracts liquidated at $9,037. So a lot of things around the $9,000 area, and boom, 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 as they say, um, they just got their heads. Handed to them. The trade is at now 8810, 8978, 8810, down now 11.45%. So know your targets. Don't get greedy. Follow some very good guidelines, rules that you set for yourself. Not that I set for you, not that a pundit or an expert, as they say, or even someone that you pay have rules that you've set out for yourself. It'll be more difficult for those that don't have rules and it looks as though we are going to come down to the break potential line. Let me go ahead and move out to the 30 minute so you can kind of see where we're at. Remember we do select Fibonacci swings. This was the, this is the break. Here's the break of 10,000. So we know we had traders get out of there but it, traditionally it's the break of channel line so we would have had traders get out there and of course once the 51 EMA on Ruby broke then we get the, the, the signal that money is not interested. The trade however is still registering because it's acting very odd and quickly. The trade is still registering Ruby long however I want to remind everyone that if you did not take profits from when Ruby went long from down here 81.63 if you did not take profits along the way and just had dust up here, you just had just a little piece of the trade up here, you are singing the blues and making all sorts of, you know, crazy allegations, uh, you know, that this doesn't work and that doesn't work, etc. No, I'm telling you, you don't work. You're not working your trade. You're not working your risk management. You're not working the money at all. You don't know what a percentage increase is um, to save your life. And so guess what? It is being handed to you wholly, fully, and our break there, 83.75, more than likely it looks like we are going to retrace to the Ruby Cross. It's very typical, especially if we don't hold the 243. So help us, help us, help us. I need to get some real young in here. All right. Oh my God, really. I know. I wish I could, you know, 
right now I look at some of these numbers of guys that are sitting around listening to people yell at them and scream obscenities and all of that and there's no structure there's no reality check and you can see it you can see it in the charts and the warning has been out there now for a while that Wall Street is coming and I can't wait uh, personally I can't wait because it gets a lot of the immature market out out of this market and uh, and it's sad it's sad to see so so it looks like the 243 is going to try and hold on but we are on high alert because we are off at such a significant amount now I guess what I would say to everyone is that this is when you need to calm yourself. You do not need screaming, you know, drug-fueled egos when the trade is acting like this, when it's behaving like this. You need calm. You need to, you need to see for yourself why you need to set out rules and structure and understand structure and understand what you're willing to go through because no one wants to see, no one wants to see you go through the pain of not knowing when to take profits because what happens is that you will end up adding on even more risk. Now the prices are right, it looks like, oh no, you buy, buy the dip, right? Heard this before. You buy the dip. The problem is with what? See, because you didn't learn how to take profits. You should be thinking about this. If you don't learn how to take profit, you won't have anything to then buy the dip. The traders that are just getting in, <clears throat> and they're you know they're just getting in because they feel like they need to get in. This will this will self heal. The likelihood that it will self heal is definitely in the trade. Wall Street is not in this trade for this thing to not self-heal. So, you know, you can calm yourself that way. And, um, but this whole idea that you buy the dip, I do want to counter that with what? With what are you going to buy the dip? Especially if you are in a forum that does not talk often enough about when and how to take profit. Because you won't have anything. There won't be anything there for you to take advantage. You see? Okay. Hope you hope you guys understand that. Trades at 9310 with the 243 holding court. 9310 now down 6.32%. Okay. All right, let's go over to the tweet deck. I want to encourage everybody to have their tweet deck up and going. I only have these five columns. Look at me. I had a I had the Bitcoin at nine thousand column. Look at that. <laughs> and that was just that was just a day ago. That is funny as all out. And then here we are right back at it. So. I didn't do the tweet deck. I didn't change column four. We call it column four now. So Bitcoin 9000 is still a column. And um, remember, we don't have retweets, so that's why you'll see a lot of this really fly by. But you took put Bitcoin, BitMEX, RECT, which has not had a liquidation long for eight minutes now. And cryptocurrency. And Bitcoin 9000 or whatever you want to that's a free column and then the word crypto and you'll notice that between Bitcoin and crypto because we have the deeper uh, Twitter now uh, that will pick up Bitcoin and crypto um, similarly but um, people will not uh, discount uh, the Bitcoin tag or hashtag but today's the day, if there were people that you wanted to follow, definitely the tweet deck can help you with that because you can see people that are posting charts or graphs or, you know, interesting things that might 
that might um, help you, like this fellow here. The coin just got cheaper. And he's using, I don't know what chart he's using here. He used to do um, that ochre chart with Ruby. Looks pretty nice. And uh, there we go. Trades at 92.05, now, 93.69. So there's a lot of volatility even in these bars here. And yet Ruby has not, and we'll zoom in here, Ruby has not changed her mind that she is long. Look at that. She's not changed her mind that she is long. We do have the 12 over the 8, though, and um, so clearly some kind of crazy probably end up um, doing a Fibonacci swing on these bars because you have to so that you can manage life. If you wanted to see me do that in real time, I will. Let me get Fibonacci. Fibonacci retracement tool. And then I won't perfect it. I'll just pick it up from the high and down to the low. It's called a Fibonacci swing. And we know that price is down here. You see that? Price is down here. But we really need for price to be up here. And that's right inside this channel. So the self-healing trade, we need to get back up in here. If not, then the uh, bears, which was the fear over the tick by tick on the beta chart, uh, that the bears were really in charge. So we can keep this up for a little bit. And um, this is just like this one is over here, high to low. I do love, just like that. And in fact, if I squeeze this down, you'll notice that I get all the higher prints of what's potential now. But this is interesting because now, of course, we know that 11,489 and 13,000 is in. It's on the charts. Charts do not lie. And the structure of price does not lie. So that's the potential right up here. 13, 3, 12. 13, 3, 12 is the potential of the trade. Because if when I drew this swing, of course, we were thinking, wait a second here, it's going to go through all of these super, super fibs, right? The 1 at 618, the 2 at 618, the 3 at 618, the 4 at 236. It's going to do all of that, and it's going to go over $10,780. Um, well, of course, it did do that. And um, so we have our swing high, 11,510. I'll go in there to make sure that those numbers are right. And then to the low, so you guys can see how I did that. We don't know if the low has really been put in. So we'll keep this as a um, progressive Fibonacci. We'll just keep an eye on it. If it's not going to give us good readings, then um, we will just scrap it. Um, there's no reason to have, you know, keep something on because you totally believe the price will will tell us whether or not it's a healthy Fibonacci. Okay, ninety five hundred is your trade right now, and let me get back into the fifteen minute bar and zoom in like that so we can see it. So you'll notice all this frostiness. That frostiness is created because we want to have Fibonacci. Mm -hmm. Like I said, um, after the event, because in nine minutes I'm going to close up, uh, let the computer rest for a little bit, power up my charger at 20%, which I think is a good idea. Well, it depends on where you're, where you're taking your price from. I don't know where you're taking your price from. Over to GDAX, it's going to be one price. If you take it over to another exchange like Bitfinex, it's going to be another price. There are some people that um, that they will select a price 
Yahoo has a price, for example. Uh, so, so does Coindesk. They have a price. In fact, if you want me to, let me... Um, Coindesk, go to Coindesk, and they'll have a price. And sometimes these can be just like their indexed prices, you know, they're, uh, it's like a basket of, you know, 10 prices, and then they average them out or weight the prices out. We can... I'll tell you what we can do. Fredo, if you go to Coin Desk, Coin Desk the main page. Oh my goodness, they don't want to load. Everybody's busy. Everybody is even Coin Market Cap opening up. Okay, they are. Okay, Bitcoin for for uh, coin market cap is pricing nine thousand six hundred and one dollars. Nine thousand six hundred and one. And then I'll get you the CNBC price. So that's coin market cap. And Yahoo Finance. See what their Bitcoin price is. I think that they are using um, the GBTC price, and which is now their BTC USD X price. Is ten thousand forty nine. So let me give you this. This over there. So the difference here is that you have an exchange engine where you trade, and the price that they give you is going to be different than the news outlets or the aggregators. So unless it's a tradable instrument, then you can get your uh, quotes from a variety of symbols. And then the Google Finance one. Let's see what their price is. I actually have the JSON in this. Um, so Google Finance is not Bitcoin is at ten thousand four hundred and ten dollars. So there is your let me grab the Google. Let's see if we can get um, see, I have Google Finance news feed, but let me see if I can find the Google price, finance price, Bitcoin. Um, yeah, they take it from CNBC. Uh, 10,409. So here's the finance from Google. Let me go for this. Once again, the chat um, will be popped out and we'll go ahead and make it all part of the comment section so it'll stay with the event. Okay, so that's a lot of links. And then let's see if our fella over 
at Zepcoin. Is able to, he was having some problems with the messenger, which makes a lot of sense. But let's see how he's doing now. Ah, good, good, good. All right, so this doesn't come out very well, but anyway, the messenger is called Zepcoin. Zepcoin. I love him. It's just a solo shop. That is the messenger bot right there. And he now, he used to be onesie twosie, but now you can do a full concatenation. That doesn't come across very nice um, inside of the chat because my basket is 276 characters long and we can only put 200 characters so i have to go back in and take off i think up to neo there we go so the delivery of the messenger is very nice though it's really fun and he puts it in a very nice little box and the thing is though is that you can't take that box anywhere else so that kind of sucks. But you can put, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine tickers. And now we know 200 tickers would be one, two, three, four, except for now we have multiple um, the decimals. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what I could do, so let me do the six and go here on Bitfinex. And then that's six tickers. Oh. Mommy gave me anyway, he's just a single shop. But I really support his work. It's very neat because it gets all the prices you know, in one, one place. So that's called Subcoin. And um, I'm always looking for, you know, coders that, that are interested enough to build tools like that. And uh, so. And it's just a one stop. It's just that when we're dealing with character counts like we are over at YouTube, then it just ends up being more frustrating. But anyway, those are the numbers that are coming off of the Bitfinex exchange. And then I have one for, of course, uh, Coinbase. And he has all the exchanges, all the exchanges and all the pairs. So it's very, very cool. Zupcoin. Love him. Um, he also is supposed to be building out a Twitter. Let me see if I can find Twitter. Call it Subcoin. Like what's up coin um I don't know why he was in you're welcome
All right, let me um, let's send them a tweet. That out. All right, so you'll notice over on the Twitter, and I sent them a little note. Here's their Twitter. And you can see kind of like all the, the different sorts of things that they do. All right, so back to the Nightbot, which is not producing timed posts. And we have all you and forward slash all you actually gives you a little teaser on the commands. So we have the commands, for example, you can do a command called Bitcoin. See what that one does probably goes to the alias. I don't know. Oh, that's the donation. Okay. You can do a command called Fibonacci. They're all forward slash. There you go. And one called rules. And one called, now this is the one I think that goes wrong. One called support. I don't think. That one is working. No. Nope. Um, and then if you do forward slash red circle, you get, let's see what you get. That's right. And then if you do forward slash green heart, we get something else. Okay, there you go. So those are the things that we're sort of testing. And um, yeah, I'm 14% low on my battery. And I'm probably going to shut things down. Does it mean that I won't be live again? But let me get my computer powered back up. Make sure that I keep that battery up and going. And the chat will go ahead and uh, pop out the chat now so that I have it secure. And can do a copy and paste. And I want to thank everyone that did come by. There'll be a nice thank you from me about the replay viewers that, you know, come on by and check this out. But uh, it's a new series and part of the Bitcoin moving, under the Bitcoin moving uh, campaign called Tick by Tick. We were doing the Tick by Tick chart until there seemed to be some lag coming in on the one minute, which happens quite a bit, um, at least for me. When you have a complex chart, sometimes all that data doesn't really come through. So anyway, we moved over to the Ruby, the 15-minute Ruby. We drew ourselves a pretty decent Fibonacci swing so that you can keep track of how price is deciding that it wants to, you know, how does it want to resolve all this volatility off of 11,000? That's what it is. When it really comes down to it, that's all that it is. There's lots of money from when the trade went long, when the trade would be long, and then, of course, to the 11,000 top. These are significant numbers by any stretch. And uh, there'll be profit taking. There'll be a lot of um, kind of you know fostering of position. And even last night, I had said that just so many people want to participate in the ten thousand dollar candle. So you know uh, markets get up, and then they think, well, I didn't get part of the ten thousand. I'll go ahead and I'll get part. I'll be part of the ten thousand to eleven thousand move. And uh, so this fall off, it's very typical. Uh, when trades go through, you know, momentous uh, price. So have no fear. Uh, there's a lot of really great pundits out there, commentary, great journalists. Um, and just follow my feed, especially if I'm in the chat of any one of these really great people, that they're great for a reason. 
And not that I have the best curatorial eye because I'm always so curious about, just curious, curious. And But there are a few people that are really just doing a wonderful job at bringing you and focusing in on the topics that might matter and curate some of the, you know, the BS that's out there so that you can, so that you can concentrate for a little while. And then you can add BS as, as time goes on. It's never a good idea to start with BS and then not know. Um, I know that I could probably write, I could probably write a really good book about when you come in as a Pollyanna and they rip you to shreds, you know, so we don't want any of that. We, there's a few of us that have been in this trade for a long time. They're, we're good people. We make money to do good. We stay on that kind of track and course, not that we don't defend ourselves against some, against some of the nonsense that's out there, but generally we're listening. We're very cognizant. We're trying to, um, you know, really take care of, right? Preserve, be good, be good curators, be good custodians of our wealth. And uh, so um, I'll share as much of that as I possibly can when I go live with you guys. It doesn't mean I can be on mic all the time, uh, but um, we can talk more about that. Make sure that you, uh, you know, just follow good people, all right? And we'll talk really soon. And uh, let me go back to my chat to say goodbye. Um, let me see here. Um, oh, I need to write more Nightbot commands. Yes, everybody needs to write more Nightbot commands. Yes, we do. But now we're supposed to look at Fussbot, according to Really. I have to go over there and see what that's all about. I suppose you can have two bots. I don't know. But I wouldn't doubt that, that YouTube, it's sort of crazy that we have Nightbot. But in a way, for them, like, doesn't Nightbot basically screen Facebook? You know? I don't know. Uh, but I thought that it was really fun while it was working. It's just neat to see. You know, you'll look over and you'll go, oh, I did that. You know? <laughs> I did that and I didn't, I didn't touch the keyboard. It's such a good feeling. Uh, so anyway, let me get running and um, we'll do one last sweep of where the trade is at right now. And um, let's see here. On the ruby, we are trading at 97.70, now 97.96 and 9800. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Beauty Bubble for Bitcoin moving tick by tick. Talk to you real soon. Bye-bye now.
Okay, I'll sneak in a little bit here just to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you so much, as you well know, right? I've drawn a circle around uh, basically that channel, if you can see it. Now, if you follow my charts and you would have seen me draw the channel, and none of this would look crazy. We had the break potential at 10,000, and price is just underneath there, but we are looking for price to go back into the 618 area, which is the 10... 10,392.74, that would well seat us inside of the channel for a continued move to the upside. But I just don't know how substantial this swing low was um, because it really took the wind out of quite a, uh, quite a lot of it. Uh, so um, the really good salespeople out there like James Altucher, for example, that are coming out and they're really just saying, you know, listen, a lot of Wall Street doesn't get it, but what you need to do, people, is expose yourself to Bitcoin. So he's a brilliant marketer. If there's anyone that can kind of get people to take another look, especially with price just around 10000 once again, people want to be involved in that $10,000 bar. Uh, it's a great bar to have that story, right? Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about now that, you know, the, oh, when, when Bitcoin was 10000 remember, Grandpa? And, wow, weren't you the smart one, Grandpa? That my Grandpa bought Bitcoin at 10000 so... It's got a lot of, you know, um, it's, you know, it, it's a momentous price, and it's a magical price, and there'll be people that will be talking about ten thousand for a very, very long time, even if we go higher and beyond and everything. There's nothing uh, that any of us were anticipating more than ten thousand. So. It's just remarkable. Thank you so much once again for stopping by. This has been Beauty Bubble underneath the Bitcoin moving umbrella for Tick by Tick. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.